We are going deep into the nostalgia jar today, talking about a relic of TV that no longer exists, Saturday morning cartoons. That ever-changing lineup of toy propaganda shows that welcomed us into the weekend on network TV. Man, there was something wonderful about waking up in the morning on a Saturday after a long week of school, plopping your lazy butt on the carpet, and just vegging out for a couple hours of mindless TV fun. Why did our parents allow us to do this? So I'm gonna be really honest, this list is pretty much built entirely around my personal experiences and the theme songs for these shows. But with that said, I would love to hear your favorite Saturday morning cartoons down in the comments below. And kids, don't forget, today's secret word is subscribe. Yeah! Hey, I'm Stuttering Craig, and this is my top 10 Saturday morning cartoons. Number 10. Late 80s, early 90s Disney was peak Disney. They did such a good job of getting us hooked into their money generating claws, it's almost criminal. And the fact that they were able to make an amazing show based off candy is stupid. The Gummy Bears premise of a little community of bears that lives in the forest in medieval times and drink magical juice that allows them to bounce around is just so good. Now I don't remember any of the characters names, but I do remember singing the theme song in elementary school in middle school, in high school, in college, and honestly, even today to my kids. Number nine. Take the Muppets. You put them in a daycare setting and you just go crazy. That is what the Muppet Babies is all about. This is an entire show built around the imagination of kids and just how wonderful it is. How kids see things that adults don't see and how they imagine things that adults are just too jaded to imagine. It was also really smart to feature tie-ins from big movies like Star Wars or Wizard of Oz. I mean, that was just always really cool to see. And each of the Muppets had their own distinct characteristics and insecurities that really actually balance out the show pretty well. Now, like most things from the 80s and 90s, they actually rebooted the show a few years ago that was actually animated pretty great. I mean, well, before Disney put Gonzo in a dress for some reason. And then guess what happened? It got canceled. Look, we all know Chippendale's theme song is amazing, but when you couple that with the show and a super fun NES game, I mean, it certainly belongs on my list. What? Why would a video game help a list about Saturday morning cartoons? Well, let me tell you, because it's a giant group package of capitalism. Look, shows, merchandise, movies, it all influences how we remember these things, right? Of course it does. <laughs> Hey, side note, did you know Chip's the one with the black nose and Dale's the one with the red nose? And do you remember this crazy guy who loves cheese? What's his name? Monterey Jack. Oh, that's a great dad pun right there. And there was also Gadget, who my childhood heart couldn't flutter over more. She was my childhood cartoon crush. What? Don't get all like high and mighty on me. Like I know she was yours too. Don't, don't be like that. Number seven. Whoa, X-Men is in stereo? Listen to this theme. Listen to it! Now, I was not a big X-Men fan as a kid, but this is the show where I first thought Wolverine was a badass. Who is your favorite X-Men and why? And tell me in the comments why it's not Dazzler. I'll tell you this much though, any show, literally any show that has good guys and bad guys running directly at each other, that upon impact creates an explosion during the intro is gonna be a winner for me. Long before we knew Pee Wee was taking his pee pee out in theaters, Pee Wee's Playhouse was a huge staple for me and my brother. Pee Wee's Playhouse is not a cartoon, but it was on Saturday mornings and did feature some claymation and of course some amazing cutting edge technology at the time. We're talking green screens here people. Pee Wee's a character though that I've always loved because of the simplicity of him is his genius. Naming a globe Globy or a chair Cherry is so simple, it's perfect. It's exactly what a kid would name him. Now while looking for footage for this top 10, I found this amazing clip where Pee Wee and Captain Carl, played by the superb Phil Hartman, play restaurant. It is an outstanding three minutes that as an adult, I truly appreciate. Pee Wee obviously plays the role of the kid, Captain Carl is the adult, and Pee Wee just drives him bonkers. Kinda like how when people on YouTube ask their audience to like and subscribe. You get no apologies at all. Because you know there's gonna be another one soon. Number five. Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. 
Before the internet was upset Chris Pratt was Mario and not Charles Martinet, this was the first voice for Mario. It was Captain Lou Albano and the other guy. Now I bought this DVD set several years ago and when I went back to watch it, I didn't realize how ridiculously low budget the live action segments were. I mean, it's kind of cringeworthy, but in an adorable kind of way. The Mario cartoon was always fun to watch and for the first time, it felt like we were actually getting to know the characters we were playing on screen. Yeah, there were all sorts of errors between the show and the game, like messed up colors when Mario touched the power up, but it just made me feel like I really knew what was going on in the game and the stupid adults that made the cartoon had no idea. And I would be remiss to mention that anyone who didn't watch the Super Mario Bros. Super Show didn't know how to do the Mario and have that song seared in their brains for eternity. But I always loved how Captain Lou was out of sync at the end of the show, trying to stay on beat. I mean, the editor, it's just, it's so bad. But that's a horrible edit. And excuse me, princess, you knew it was coming. I didn't even got to how cool it was that on Fridays we got to watch a Zelda cartoon. To a Nintendo's characters getting a TV show? I mean, how could it get any better? Four. Well, it did, because what's better than a show based off one or two games? A show based on all the games. Talk about living out a fantasy. I mean, what kid didn't think about being pulled into a video game and helping out his video game heroes? I mean, sure, Mega Man didn't look anything like Mega Man, and Simon Belmont was an underachieving beta, and Kid Icarus was a little bitchicus. And Mother Brain, well, Mother Brain was indeed Mother Brain. <laughs> but this was video games becoming bigger than video games. And I loved it. One highly underrated part of Captain Men that doesn't get talked about was its use of reimagined music from the video games used during the show. I mean, take a look at this great example from the YouTube channel Artificial Orange Studios. I mean, how cool is that? Three. You may have heard of Bobby's World, or not. I mean, I was surprised to find out that it ran seven seasons through the 90s, but if you ever saw the show, you know why it would. I mean, if you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of shows that explore kids' imagination. Howie Mandel, the creators of Bobby's World, pulled off how kids think and see the world wonderfully. I remember watching this episode where Bobby and his siblings are in the backseat of a car and his dad's driving and they're making all this noise and his dad's like, you better shut up. And he start, does the old reach back behind his seat while trying to drive, you know, he's reaching back there. I thought it was so stinking funny. As a kid I did, and now as an adult I find it even more funny because I'm the one reaching back trying to grab the Cheetos or whatever or tell my kids, shut up, shut up. No, I don't really do that, <laughs> but either way, we've all been there, right? It's just, everyone does the reach back, it's amazing. Bobby's World wasn't on a big network. I think it was on Kids WB where I aired. So I don't know if it ever gained ridiculous popularity, but it certainly has a cult following. So much so that Bobby actually appeared on an episode of Deal or No Deal. It's so corny, but I love it. Number two. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. DuckTales is obviously one of the most iconic cartoons in American history. Coupled with one of the best NES games there was, this was a power package. I always enjoyed how the intro had these really nicely animated scenes, but you could also tell when the show was in full production, it just didn't look quite as good as the intro, or was like lower frame rates and stuff. As someone who doesn't know a whole lot about cartoon production, I would imagine that's pretty commonplace. Anyways, did you know that just like Chippendales, there's also a three minute version of the original song? And if you haven't yet, definitely check out the reboot of this series. It's legit pretty spectacular and has some deep cuts for fans of the Saturday morning cartoons version and of course the NES game. Hey, before we get to number one, I just want to say it has been a blast making these top tens for you guys here on YouTube. If you can spare a cup of coffee a month, please consider becoming a member down below to my YouTube channel. I would love to get back to making as much content as possible for y'all, and with your support, I'll be able to do it and take one step a bit closer. I legit greatly appreciate it. Number one. <laughs> like, holy crap, was there ever any doubt? The Ninja Turtles are freaking holy grails of nostalgia for any person my age. You got a hit with an amazing TV show, the video games, toys, cereal. I mean, it was all there, but really, the second that turtle van opened up to reveal those turtles, I mean, it was all over. That is so cool. I mean, I love how the intro gives the impression of some super hardcore show, while the actual show is just about pizza and fun and silly enemies. Some people talk about how the TMNT cartoon is an abomination of the original source material. 
Man, get over yourself. I mean, for a lot of us, this was our source material. This is the first time we met Leo and Don and Raph and Mikey. And because of the cartoon, we know that Leonardo leads and Donatello does machines and Raphael is cool but rude and Mikey, yes, is indeed a party dude. Hey, here's a question for you. Did you have an Ninja Turtles birthday? No, no, no. I think actually a better question is how many birthdays did you have that were Ninja Turtle themed? Oh, hey, I got an even better question. Have you watched the top 10 fighting games or the top 10 Mario games? I mean, they're hanging out in the playlist right here or in the description for you guys. Hey, also, I'm trying to get a new top 10 out every single Monday. So make sure to subscribe.